back for Debbie and I for the last mm -hmm. 10 years. Thank you very much. And last but not least is my wife Debbie, who was stood through the whole program and shoved the pills down the throats and wondered why they made the mess in the house and complained who got what, when, and why. But she's always been here, and I thank her as much as everyone. Thanks so much. Uh, tonight, we have a series of lectures. This is the first in a series of lectures that this school is going to present. I think you'll find them very informative. Uh, my lecture tonight will concern temperament. And tonight, I'm going to express something and show something to you that you probably, most of you, have not heard of, understood of, and I hope when we're done, you will understand. This will be a cause as I can assure you, at a later of great concern throughout the United States, uh, I have traveled many, many miles. I have trained over 3,000 animals, and I have over 250-some stitches to vouch for this. So I can assure you that these are, this is some factual information, and it will occur. <clears throat> so I'm going to start off tonight with an argument. I think it's always good to start arguing. I like to argue. <laughs> In most of the readings and teachings you see in America today, you will see the temperament. Temperament, as you know, is what we're made up of. I have a handout here that I would like, I will ask my wife if she would ask this out for you. Now, we'll, we'll get into it in a minute. But basically, temperament is described in most professionals around the world today as being 80% hereditary and 20% environmental. As much as I hate to it, but as much as I love to, I must dispute this term. There is no environment in temperament. Temperament is 100% hereditary. You and I are born with what we are. You and I cannot change that. We will discuss character later. The temperament is the genetic makeup of each and every one of us. It is the genetic makeup of each and every animal. The only difference between an animal and us is they lack the ability to reason. You and I can have deductive reasoning. We can deduce from learning and make a decision based on a rationalization on reasoning. The animal has not that ability. You can believe me. It has not been building. It can only learn what it has been shown. If, for example, the person says, I don't believe that, Wayne. My dog has, has never been hit on that interstate. He has crossed that interstate a hundred times. What occurs, what the person doesn't realize, is the very first day, as he approached the interstate and he walked out onto the interstate, the car slammed the brakes, blew the horn, slid sideways and threw gravel on him. And the dog ran away. Tomorrow, he was a smart dog. The dumb one you've seen, he lays on the side of the road, bleeding. The smart one, tomorrow, as he approaches the interstate, he goes, oh, I remember, I remember. Yesterday, I come up here. And something big and awful come at me, scared me, and I run away. Therefore, I will stay and watch, and when this big awful thing goes by, I will run across. And when he runs across, by watching the big awful thing go by, he has now learned through repetition that he is secure. If I don't go in front of this moving vehicle, then I will be secure. And if I wait till it passes, I can make it. So the smart dog has learned to do this. The dumb dog takes more than one repetition to learn. When this occurs, he usually lays on the side of the road because on an interstate, it doesn't get more than one chance, generally. We're going to get into this in a little more in depth, but at first, I would like to discuss a few definitions that we use in the professional field that are involved in training. And you see, why do I speak of aggression? Aggression is a form of evaluation, whether it be a cockapoo, a poodle, a mixed breed, a German Shepherd, a Doberman, it doesn't matter. Every animal has a form of aggression. If you learn to read and focus your directives at this aggression, 
you will be able to understand why and how he does certain things. So the definitions that we just handed out, please follow with me a moment. Courage. The dog's willingness to withstand the physical and verbal threats of the agitator on an agitator's terms. Agitator meaning me, a threat. I am a threat when I approach. I do not mean a physical threat to abuse, hit, smack, injure. A physical threat. I am coming after you. Hardness. The physical and mental endurance that gives the dog a willingness to withstand pain and abuse for the love of the fight. He will withstand certain pains and abuses just because he has sufficient hardness, hardness to take him. Fighting instinct. This is the amount of drive the dog demonstrates to have physical contact with an agitator. If he has no fight, and we're in a police or a protective form of training, and he has no fighting drive, then he will not confront the agitator. He will leave. He has no fighting instinct. Temperament, the most misunderstood subject I've run across in 10 years and $3,000. The characteristic peculiarities, both physical and mental, of an individual's dog made evident through his reaction to things within his environment. A couple words on training. Effective training. This is military, military type training. This is training that teaches and exercise, but does not encourage or develop a good attitude. No happy. The dog said, I do it because I know you hurt me if I don't. This is not good. Good training. This is training that teaches and exercises for the dog to sit with a motivational aspect for the animal to enjoy what he does. And short shot, which you will see tremendous volumes of these animals come through your facility. This is a classification of temperament when a dog is naturally shy or lacks sufficient confidence. He reacts to a situation very quickly, usually in an aggressive manner. He is aggression based in fear, to put it short. His aggression at you is sheer fear for his own life. It has no outwardness. This animal will not bite you frontal. Never. He has no courage. If you do not show fear and you approach a shark shy animal in a frontal position and let him know, I'll, I'm, you're, I'm not afraid of you, and you look hard at him, I can assure you he won't bite. But the instant you retreat, the animal will bite in pursuit. You have ex exhibited to him fear. You have left. As you leave, he will bite. If you turn in front, he'll back away. There will be hackle and other indicators which we'll get into later. All right? Now, with some definitions in mind, I would like to take you through how we evaluate a dog's temperament. Contrary to what the newspaper printed, which was an accident, they said this was all based on German Shepherd. This was incorrect. This is based on all breeds of animals. I've evaluated Chihuahuas. Poodles, Australian Shepherds, Blue Healers. I have trained over 65 different breeds, and I've kept a categorized list of each one of them. And they all fall into a category. There are exceptions, but they fall into a given category. The way to evaluate a person, let's give you a scenario. I take you, and I, you, don't, you know me as a friend. I say, come on, we're going downtown. I put you in the car, and for those of you that aren't familiar with Clay County, West Virginia, it's a pretty rugged place. Coal miners, lumberjacks, big, nasty, rough people. Beards, shaven, maybe not even smell so good. And I bring you up and I set you down at the bar beside him. No alcohol now. Forget alcohol. Alcohol changes. You sit down, I say, I'll be back. I leave. Huh, you're sitting there and somebody sits beside you, somebody sits beside you. You're in front. You're under stress. Now, in a form of stress, there will be several things that happen to you. The first being, how are you today? You smack this guy and you run. What did you exhibit? Aggression based in fear. You hit him <coughs> and you left. Unsound. The next scenario begins a discussion with you, whomever, and you discuss back. 
you see many people come around, you have a lot of money on you, you feel threatened. You're sound stable in the mind, so you discuss a way out of this situation. You're not unstable, you're sound. And you make a rationalization through reasoning that, uh oh, I can't whip all these people. I'm going to work my way out of here. Come on. So you do, and you say, excuse me, I'll be right, well, would you buy me a beer? I'll be right back in about a year. <laughs> and you exit and you're gone, stable. Then you have the other one that the person walks up and says, how are you doing? How are you doing? And you fly right into him with no fear. You whip him. You fly right into Over aggressiveness. You didn't even give the man a chance or the woman a chance. You just flew right into him. And what happened? Over aggressiveness. You stopped him because you were big and strong and you wasn't going to take the chance on anything to happen. You triggered to a situation extremely quick. So you can see there's classifications of people. These are comply dogs. The first thing I'll ask you when you bring your animal to me, socialization, how old is he? What kind of breed is he? Does he live in the house? Does he live outside? Is he tied to a chain? Does he live in a pen? Is he good with children? Has he ever bitten anyone? And the lady will say, no, and those will go, now one time, well, yeah, well, yeah, one time. One time my brother got up and moved over there and, and grabbed that thing off the counter and the dog bit him. Oh, what did it tell me? The dog was sharp. He was sharp because he was quick. He reacted to stimuli within the environment without thought. He bit, he grabbed, he held on quick. He didn't think about it. It wasn't a threat to the dog. He just did it. So through a series of questions, I can assure you I can determine socialization. Socialization is graded proper or improper. If it's been properly socialized, this means that the animal has been around two people, grown up with other people, been with children, rode in the car, heard trucks backfiring, heard gunfire at a distance, and it says, big deal, there's no problem. <coughs> I like the world, there's no problem. I can handle the world. If he's been improperly socialized, he will be stable, he could be stable in temperament, but yet environmentally unsound. I've never seen a gun, a gun goes off and runs. I've never seen a pup, I've never seen another animal in my life. Another puppy, what's he do? He aggresses. I, I've never seen people, I've been kept in a kennel on a, off the ground. I've actually seen puppies that people have raised in a cage and set them on the ground and they're scared to death. The fear of grass. This is not temperament. This is environment. This is where the dog never saw grass if we didn't know what it was. So through a series of questions and answers, I will develop a program of saying you have properly socialized your animal or you have improper. It's, this is an in, all these are very in-depth subjects. I'm going to touch on them lightly for you. But once I've determined this, Ms. Johnson has properly socialized her animal. Next step, temperament. There is no, the animal is sound or he is unsound. There is no deviation between the two. He is a thin line in the middle of the road. You cannot walk the line because it's a razor. It cuts. You're either here or you're here. You can't be both. You're a stable animal or you are an unstable animal. How do I determine whether he is sound or unsound? By pressures. Pressures meaning threats. Whether he be a Chihuahua or a Rottweiler, it makes no difference. If I threaten him, 50 yards, 20 yards, whatever the distance, these are zones, we won't get into that. I threaten uh, I'm coming after you. I'm going to whip you. The dog will immediately, immediately, he will show me his temperament. He will go, <laughs> okay, I, I'm ready. I'll hold you away. Or he will do this. He will back away. If he backs away, he may just back away through submission, or he may back away through sharp shyness, aggression based in fear. So as I approach the animal, the hackle will come from the back of the neck. It will go completely to the tail. 
Maybe only here, it may go a ridge clear down like a Rhodesian ridge back. <laughs> he will go all the way. This is a, and then he will go, I, 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 I. And as you approach, he backs away. He backs away. I turn and he goes, I, at the end of the line, to bite me. This is a chihuahua or a poodle or, or a shepherd. It doesn't matter the breed. Please take into consideration the breed is of no concern here. Any breed. Aggression, Mason. <clears throat> if the dog is sound, he will stand. If he has never seen aggressive work before, then he will just look at you like, what are you doing, you idiot? Running around, all around me, flipping a sack, cracking a whip, running at me, running around me, right, like you're going to hit me and you never do. I'm not afraid of you. He stands still. Then you walk up to him and you go, ah, go to the ground. That's a good boy. And you walk away. And you walk back and he just stands there like, <laughs> makes you happy, praise me. Don't matter me a bit. You have a dog that's sound. He has no fear. He has been properly socialized and he's sound in temperament. He's stable. He's stable. Now, on the other hand, he is unsound. If he is unsound, there are several things can happen. We just talked about sharp, shy, aggression based in fear. Hackle will occur. Tail will tuck. And he will, he will exhibit aggression. I, 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 I would like you if you come here, and then I come here. And he goes, no, no, not really. Why fear? I have no, I have no confidence. I like to, my bark is worse than my bite. So I aggress you, but if you really challenge me, I run, I run. I'm afraid, I'm afraid. So we class shark shot. This dog never, <coughs> never makes a protection animal. Why? Why won't he make a protection animal? He won't defend. He sits here. He he looks like he's going to work, but when the real threat occurs, he goes, "No, no, I was just bluffing. I'm afraid. I'm leaving." Aggression based in fear. Then the next one. This is the one where I can relate 200 and some stitches to. <laughs> Over aggressiveness. I look at him. He, I test him. He says, "I'm not afraid of you." Or the next time I approach, I, 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 I have no hackle. The hair is down, the tail is even wagging, the dog is intense. And when I look in his eyes, what do I see? I see a pupil. I see a dilation of the pupil. I see a glaze haze begin to go over his eyes. If he fixes, his pupil will fix. If he fixes, he is crazy. You have no control. He will bite and he will not bite you from fear. He will bite you from sheer attack. Man, Jeff, or Terry, doesn't matter. He is aggression, over-aggressive. It takes just a small trigger, and I, 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 and you come in, you take a whip or a stitch, and you pretend like you're going to hit him, and he doesn't even phase him. And as you look in his eyes, you see this pupil grow and dilate. You see a haze begin, and then if you run away and you work, you're okay up until the point of the fixed pupil. When the pupil fixes in the animal, he will bite you, me, and anybody else. He has no distinction between people, none at all. He is crazy. Western State Hospital has a few of these people, humans down there. Then uh, they also have a few of those people that their pupil maybe doesn't fix, but they glaze. And during the right sequence, without thought, they pull the gun and shoot somebody. But yet you say, well, he's not crazy. I've been around him for five years. That man's all right. Why? He's unsound. He's over-aggressive. The next one we'll exhibit or we'll see of unsoundness is submissive. Submissive is an unsound characteristic. However, it can be environmental. We'll get into that in a minute. It can be environmental. There's a way to judge that. If the dog is submissive through <coughs> genetics and breeding, he will not show aggression in his fear. He will only show submission. Tail tuck, ears down, head down, unafraid. And as you're approaching, he'll lay down. He may even wet. And you pray, that's okay, good boy. It's okay, you're okay, it's okay. You walk away, you come back. Now, through a series of two or three weeks, the animal will come to me, but let a stranger walk in again. And the same situation occurs. Then we'll lay down. He will be in submission. We'll get to why, how you can judge it environmentally in a minute. Temperamental. 
Temperamental dog is an oversensitive dog. People are temperamental. You yell at them. I have students. Uh, I yell a lot. You notice I don't have a microphone on. I don't need that. I can talk to a bigger room than this without a microphone. You yell at somebody and the girl goes, oh, or the man, oh, and tears come in their eye. And they go, what did I do wrong? Well, they didn't do nothing wrong. It's just my nature. I was out yelling, trying to get them correct. Oversensitive. Temperamental. Temperamental is another hereditary type trait that I see hundreds of dogs have. Wedding, approach wedding, stress. We're going to talk about stress in a minute. They can't handle life. They can be socialized for life in a given pattern and learn it. And we'll be okay. It'll be fine. There'll be no problem. But let one thing change in that pattern. <coughs> Remember, it learns through repetition. It does not learn through reasoning. So let one of its daily routines change and the animal goes into stress. Temperamental. Poor breeding. Poor breeding. You do not breed this type of dog. <coughs> and the last, hyperactivity. Everybody says, my dog is Everybody uses this word, hyper. This dog is hyper, 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 hyper. <coughs> Hyperactivity is a temperament fault. High energy is not. Hyperactivity is an animal that's metabolism is operating three times or two times, whatever, the normal speed of the breed. He is hyper. Ah, I must eat food. I must go to the bathroom. I must run, 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 run. Why? I can't deal. This is why they administer it and an amphetamine to bring it down. To slow it down because it's so fast in its metabolism that they actually administer a upper drug, an upper type drug, that is lower than adult hyperactivity, therefore it slows the dog down here. <coughs> Breeding. Unsound, unstable dogs. These dogs do not make protection dogs. <coughs> This one can be used for guard work. Why? He's a perimeter animal. He lives with no one. He lets no one in the field, no one in the fence. Therefore, he is an overaggressive animal. You come inside the fence, I bite. Whether you have a shotgun, 12 gauge, 357, ball, bat, whipple ball, doesn't matter. I'll bite. If you kill me, okay, you win. If you don't, I'll bite you. Why? I'm crazy for the bite. I'm crazy. I'm overaggressive. So the, the next thing down the line is the temperament. I look, I say, oh man, this dog is unsound. He's not stable. Or he is sound, whichever. No deviation between it, please, none. Believe me, there is none. He's there or he's not there. The next thing I look at is character. Character is all environment. And I cannot believe that these people and some people in, in the United States speak that temperament is made up of your character. Your character, I change. I, what's what I do for a living is alter the character of the dog. I change him. If you are a sound person and I take you to the same bar in Clay County and I slowly introduce you to these people, what have I done? Alter your character. So you feel confident in that little crazy dial. You sit there comfortable. Did I change your temperament? No. You did not change your temperament. I can't. I cannot change your temperament, but I can alter your character to believe that you are in a comfortable situation. And the situation you are in is a good situation. You are happy. You feel, ah, oh, there's no threat here. I'm comfortable. What we do in training is first deduce, is this dog sound or unsound? He is sound. But he has a character problem. His character is that of a hard dog. He's a soft dog. Or he's a medium. He's in between. Given, given there is some character traits that are hereditary. They are born. They are inborn through breeding. You will have a certain trait about you of being, well, this guy, like Wayne, is loud and talks a lot. That's my character. That comes from me. But you can change my character. It may be hard, but you can change me. You can make me soft-spoken, quiet, apologetic, sympathetic. You can change me. And again, you can also change me the other way and make me aggressive, louder, more boisterous, more aggressive. But I don't flip out. 
because I'm sound. I'm sound. I have enough sense about me to realize life. And I know my limit. I had a lady come to me with a rock rider. And I walked in the pen. She put in the pen and come to a student. And I walked out and I looked at the dog. I just walked up. I just walked up to it. Oh, his eyes fixed immediately. He glazed. Then he attacked the wire. And I walked back in. I said, Do you understand what you have? She says, Well, I think. Could you tell me? <coughs> so I did. I said, It's unstable. Dog's in sound. Over aggressive tendencies. I said, Has this dog ever bitten you knowing it had? And she says, No. And then she paused and she says, because I know just how far to push you. So you know who won in that household. The minute he wanted to do what he wanted to do, the lady said, okay, okay, it's okay, eat the chair, it's okay. <laughs> you like the chair, eat it, it's okay with me. You buy another one, Bill, and you ate it. If she would have gone over and went, no, ah, over aggressive. Yep, attack, bite, a bite, immediately bite, over aggressiveness. Character has strictly, strictly, it is all environment. Once we are bred with the character we have and it is out at seven weeks of age, it is apparent. It is there. You can change this. We do it for a living. You can take a soft dog that when you first come to is whines and cries a little, <coughs> has a low threshold of pain, and you can slowly work and pursue and run and get a confidence and confidence and develop it. Develop it to a point to where I can give it the sleeve or attack and bite and I can smack it right square on the back as hard as you want to smack it and it'll just say, ah, it's okay, I've done this before. I changed its character to withstand pain, a little abuse for the love of its bite because it's stable, it's stable, okay? Now, we come to one other point, which is a big, big point. Stress. Dogs experience like human stress. High levels, low levels of stress. I have a rock water right now that you can reach over and grab her right to the side. By the scruff of the neck, pick her up off the ground, shake her. Now this river is called lateral, and drop her. Shake her. And she'll jump up with a little old stubbed tail right and sit beside you. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> This is fun. Do it again. I like it. I like it. I like it. What's it have? High stress levels. It takes a lot of stress for this dog to break down. A lot. This type of dog is a very slow maturing dog. It does not mature quick because it takes time. It just, when it doesn't agitate, it doesn't work properly because it goes, it doesn't bother me. You can run around and crack your whip and run it. You just, you don't bother me. I'm not afraid of you, period. And I'll never be afraid of you. Now remember, we can never, ever, ever abuse or hit or injure these animals. Never. That's what 90% of the trainers in America now do. It doesn't bark and bite. It's a year old. Why not? Well, watch this. I'll pinch it good. It'll bite. <coughs> they defense it. They force it to bite. Then what's it doing? Biting from fear. If I play a game and a game and a game, and if you want, I'm going to tease, tease you, tease you, and tease you for one day, two days, five days, five months, one year maybe. Finally, you're going to go, I've had it. I'm not going to take any more of this guy. Every day he comes out here and he upsets me and he runs around. He's never hurt me, but he bothered me. He agitated. Why do you think they call us agitators? We agitate him. We slowly <coughs> agitate him, constantly. We provoke him slow, slow, slow. And then when we provoke him and he finally raises his ears and goes, Arr! and barks, I run away. And he goes, just what I thought. I can handle you. Just what I thought. And tomorrow I, 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 I get a little bit closer and he's right here and I give him one more step in. He's right at that point of breaking. He goes, I, I, boy, when you see him just ready to back up. He's ready to take that step. I run away. And he goes, I got forward. And he says, ah, just what I thought. Just hang in there. You can run. This guy's afraid of me. I can run him away. Over a period of one day, six months, whatever. It's based on temperament and based on several other things. But I can develop this dog to come out after me. What did I change? Character. Did I change his temperament? 
Did I take the sharp shy dog that's over aggressive and run from him and run from him and run from him? I have hours of video to, exa to, to prove this point. Hours. I can socialize a sharp shy dog and teach it by altering its character till it will actually run out and with no hackle and bite and be praised and rewarded. And then on the same stroke, I can take it off the property, move it over in the next meta, tied to the post, and let you walk up to it, and immediately, happen, deer, ah. And I come to it, and it goes, oh, I know you, it's okay. You're okay, I know you. This is where many, many, many trainers make mistakes because they allow a socialization to occur, and then when it occurs, they think, they think that this dog's all right. Uh, I changed that. He's all right. No, he's not all right. Temperament cannot be changed. Cannot be changed. We have a low level of stress and a high level of stress relative to character. Dogs that have high stress withstand a lot of stress. They load in a car. They will drive to Fred's in Alabama. I can get out of the car and give him a food bowl and he'll eat and he'll go to the bathroom and he'll have a good time and he'll be friends with everybody and he'll go to the motel and he'll live. Then I have a little bitch in the pen that's got a sound temperament but character problems here. Her character problems are low stress. The stress of the drive, the change of the water, the change of the food she won't eat. She's okay with people because the temperament's sound. She says, oh, it's okay, there's no problem. But boy, the nine hours in that car, this new ground, I, I'm a little, I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. Back <coughs> to the bar. I brought you in the bar, you were unstable, you were unsound. Or I mean, you were sound, but you had stress problems. And after I scared the daylights out of you, but didn't hurt you, but I pressured you to see what you made up of, and you stood your ground, you were sound, you went, oh, am I glad I got out of that. Then I go up and say, here you go, here's a T-bone steak and some Coke. <laughs> You want to eat that? No. All of a sudden, your appetite's gone, isn't it? You're not at all hungry anymore. Just not hungry. Why? Stress. You have been stressed. Okay? The animal has high, low stress. What I like to see in an animal is a dog that can experience a medium level of stress. We'll get to it down here in a minute. I'll explain it in depth. Now we deal with aggressive. When I threaten you, are you aggressive? No. It's okay, you don't have to be aggressive. The small breeds aren't normally aggressive. The Australian Shepherd isn't aggressive. A lot of breeds are not aggressive in nature. So this is used for an aggressive evaluation, not necessarily for all, it's used for all breeds, but it doesn't, not necessarily because your dog has low aggression levels or no aggression levels means that he's no good, no. But if I crowd him into where he should be an aggressive animal, he should exhibit aggression to me, and he doesn't, then I go, oh, he has no aggression. But all the way, what am I bringing? I'm all the way down my list. I'm showing, ah, oh, he's proper as those pots. He's sound in the head. He's basically medium or soft in his character. He, he has a medium at the stress level, and he has very low with none aggression. This doesn't have any bearing on temperament. It has a bearing on the breeding of the dog, we can breed the dog and bring more aggression in, but the breed of the dog might not be an aggressive animal. So we look at it as a point of, oh, it's okay. The next step, intensity. If he experiences aggression, is he intense in his aggression? Meaning a monotone barker. You will have a dog that I, a, a little Australian or whatever, and I go, I threaten, it's like, arf, 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 arf. He may be a monotone barker. Arp, 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 I run and I get close. Arp, 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 The dog has a high level of aggression. Ah, much aggression, but no intensity. On the other flip of the coin, I have a Rottweiler that has no aggression. It just lays there. And as you come to it, it's sound. And as you approach it, you threaten it, it drops its head. And it looks at you. It tilts its nose down. Instead of going, mouth closes and looks at you with a very piercing look and all of a sudden when you when you enter what we call the threat zone in training you crowd it it goes ah. very intense no aggression no aggression but very intense it's aggression 
level is a low dog, but it has an extreme amount of intensity behind it. This is what we call a defense dog, meaning I will only bite you when I can't get any further that way. <laughs> 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 I, uh, and what do you see? As you approach, you've all seen them. You've been in the office. You've walked up on them, and you see him go. I, I, then he quiet. He's real quiet. He looks at you. As you approach, he backs away. He backs up. He stands there and looks at you and looks at you. And, uh, then you hear a low growl. Uh, and you go one half step closer. Uh, and a half step closer. Uh, up comes a canine. Uh, then as you enter the actual threat zone, just this is this occurs just before you go into the dominating zone, he will go, I if you run away at that point, what will he do? I won. I'm the winner. I run you away. I see many, many, many animals like this. And they make decent dogs <coughs> later because why? I back him up and dominate him and say, you can't work with me. I run away. <coughs> and then he goes, the next time he goes, I, he steps out of line. I run away. And within five days, I got him going, I run, 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 run. Not after me. What did I do again? I changed. I'm altering character. I'm taking an animal that has very <coughs> low aggression, but high intensity that wants to defend, but really hasn't been trained to do it, doesn't know, never know what showed him. And as I escape and leave, he goes, oh, I'm, I'm big, I run that big guy away. And I do it again, and he, he runs away again, and he runs over a period of six months. I got a dog that will, the minute I grab a whip from 50 yards and go, ah, I'm coming after you, he goes, right, right. And he says, no, no, I'm coming after you. And I take off, and he runs after me in pursuit. <coughs> the last one we talk about, is recovery time. This is extremely important, and I have more trouble with my students with this than any other category, probably. The judge of recovery time is how quick you and I respond and recover from a stressful situation. If I pressure you, and back to the scenario in the bar, I pressured you and I upset you. You're a wreck. But you didn't leave. You talked your way out. You're stable. You stood your ground. And you go, boy, I feel better now. And I said, here's that T-bone. I set it up on the table. And he went, oh, boy, it's about time. I'm hungry. <laughs> you pull that thing over there and you fly into it. You recovered extremely quick from stress. That's an excellent point for all breeds. All breeds. <laughs> it is not uncommon for the animal to experience stress. It is not at all uncommon. We all do. I get stressed. I get scared. Another example, I'm up at night at 3.30 in the morning. <coughs> Who? What, what's going on here? I jump out of bed. What do you, what's the first thing you grab? Can I? Can you go Josh, is big. Four and a What's the matter here? You have, we experienced a level of stress. Now, what if all of a sudden the bad guy jumps and goes, hi! <laughs> and it's your mother. <laughs> you didn't recover, did you? You didn't recover from a stressful situation. You did not recover. You didn't make it. You reacted to a stimuli within the environment without thought. You are a sharp, not sharp shot, sharp person. Person. If I if you fire then you are shark shy. You have responded aggressively from fear. If I'm a stable person with a quick recovery time, I will go, oh, I'm scared. Don't think I'm not. I'm stressed. You scared me. It's 4.30. Why are you here? No one's supposed to be here. You beat on the door. You door locked through my window. And you're beating on the door. I'm scared. But I have enough stability about me to maintain my head. I got the gun, the ball bat, whatever I get a hold of first. And I'm waiting on you. And you come in, and it's your neighbor saying, Ha! Happy birthday, Wayne! Come on in, guys! <laughs> and you're, oh. But the unstable person that has a very poor recovery time, huh, will shoot, will shoot immediately. Believe me, they will not recover quick. So I back up now, and I look to you, I go, Where's your dog live in the house? Ever been? No. 
Can I give it a bone? Oh, sure. Can the kids take it away? Oh, yeah, it's no problem. They feed him all the time. Does he live in a pen or outside? Well, he lives in a pen outside, and sometimes at the time, but generally he's in the house. <laughs> okay? <laughs> oh, good. That's good, really. The dog is socialized to what? Outside, chain, and in the home. On the other hand, I say, where does he live? Oh, we have to leave him on chain. Oh, you do? Did, does he get loose? No, my golly, no. We can't catch him when we turn him loose. <laughs> <laughs> we turn him loose, he runs away. What do we got? Pursuit problems. Is it temperament? No. It's character. It's character problems. So immediately I know you have got an animal that you, because of improper socialization through its life, that when you turn it loose, it leaves. Why? It's a freedom response. I gotta get away. I ain't coming back. <laughs> then, did, can you catch it? Yeah, I caught it. Oh, Bill caught him. He boy, he beat him, half him. Well, I don't think you'll ever run away again. <laughs> And then he comes to me, and I go like this. I walk out on the field, they tie him up there on the fence post, he's never been there, and I go, and 40 feet away, I go, uh, like this, and the dog goes, oh, no, his head goes down, and he cowers. And I say, you struck this dog. No. <laughs> We've never hit it. Yesterday, we had a rock bottle from Morgantown come down. The lady, I tested it 40 feet, I had a whip. 40 feet! I went, Shh. the dog just dropped his head on the ground and closed his eyes. I said, ma'am, this dog will never make any form of protection. You, you have hit this dog. No, no, I have not. And she had another breed, half breed there, or whatever, with her, holding her between her legs. And I said, now, that's okay. I understand. I didn't argue. I've been there. So I didn't argue. I said, you, your hands are for loving. Your hands are for praise. If I walk up to my wife, and every time I walk up to her, which I do, <laughs> and I knock her around, what's going to happen about the sixth time I walk up there? Is it her breeding? No. It's her character. Why? Environment. Why? Me. Boom, boom, boom. Your hands are loving. So the lady waits. 30 minutes later, we test two or three of the students. Dog. The little half breeds between her legs. <laughs> and this dog goes, ar, 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 and she goes, smack, no! And <laughs> his head right flat on the ground. And I just looked at her, and boy, you could see her. I, oh, she just, she never, I said, I, I, I knew you were right. You never have ever hit your dog. Had you. she, she never said a word to me the rest of the time. She said, well, I didn't hit it hard. <laughs> this is character. This is character. Character is, is an environmental situation that we must deal with. And to develop a good dog, we must have a dog that is sound in temperament, properly socialized, and I can develop his character. I can develop what I want. I can teach a drug dog to be drug work. I can teach a bloodhound to find scent. I can teach a dog to be aggressive. I can teach a dog to just to be sit for a ball. You, you can teach anything you want because you are altering character. If these people were correct and they said that the temperament was 20% in the, in the environment, then all I need to do is when they're born, let them smell dope for six or eight breedings, and about the seventh breeding, when they pop out at seven weeks, they run and find out. <laughs> Come on. They can't do this. They can't do this. This is crazy for these people to think this. It is hereditary. Temperament is hereditary. <coughs> we breed sound, stable temperament. We breed the best to the best, and we hope for the best. That's all we can do. We want a stable animal that has the ability for its character to de be developed in any aspect we desire. Any. Any. You can teach him. You see him on TV. Go get me a beer, Duke. And he runs to the... You see, this dog does that. He does open the fridge. He will bring the beer can back. I don't think he... I, if he does pour it and drink it, that's it. But, <laughs> but he does do these things. Why? We have altered the character to do these things. We have changed it. We had soundness here. We had a dog that socialized that isn't afraid of refrigerators. So, sure, I'll go get it. No problem. I'll do what you want. We changed the character of the dog. Hopefully, hopefully, we have an animal that its stress levels in the animal, which is involved in him, is stable enough till he can either handle a lot of stress or not so much stress. If you take a low-stress animal, the fir your first question is, well, Wayne, uh, 
low stress means that he is upset easily, right? Yes. This means that this is breeding, right? It can be breeding. But if it's breeding, it's where? Here. It's not low stress. It's coming out. It's not low stress. Some of us are low stress people. But we recover pretty quick. It doesn't take much to upset us, but we recover. We recover quickly. And when we do recover quickly, then we're stable. When we don't recover, we're in major, major problems. Major, major problems. You can't. You can't. I've had animals come in that never recover. Would you believe that most boarders that have low stress levels won't eat, drink, or go to the bathroom for five to seven days? They can't. They won't. And I don't mean in a cage now. I'm talking about a 25 foot run is five foot wide. He's sound in the head. You know, he's okay in the head. He's all right. He'll come right to you. <laughs> Give me a biscuit. No, don't want it. <laughs> you thirsty? No, no. Now, he won't die. <laughs> he won't die. He will drink. He will eat. But his stress level is so low that he never, he does not recover quick. It's five, six days. The next time he comes, four days. The next time, two. The next time, one. And most of them, the next time they come in, they go, I've been here, no problem. <laughs> this is fun. I eat, drink, it's fun. I run in the run. It's all right. I play with the other dogs. I like this. What do we do? I socialize the dog to a kennel environment that he had never seen before. He naturally had an un a low stress level. And through proper socialization, I have altered his character till he is one of, oh, kennels are no problem. I've uh, been there before. I can handle them. They're no problem. I like them. I like them. They're no real problem. So he, he comes back. The next time you go to Chicago and drop him off, he goes, ah, I smell a wire. Don't other than no, it's okay. I I got to. But the first time he comes in, he was low stress. He was low stress. And he didn't recover very quick. But I can change him. If I can change him, he's character. That's why you don't breed character. If you could breed character, I'd breed me some drug dogs and some man trading dogs and some protection dogs and some natural retrieving dogs and a bunch of dogs in just a minute. They were seven weeks old. He goes, no problem. I just go get the dumbbell, bring it back, sit down, and when you yell, heal, I'll come around and sit. I wouldn't need to train him, would I? Because why? I can breed character. I can't breed character. I must develop character. And I must develop character through a dog that is sound in the head. And you and I must socialize this animal properly. If we don't, we have ruined the character till we can't get him back. Animals that have been not been socialized at about, oh, don't quote me on the exact date, 16, 18 weeks of life with no socialization, you'll recover them, they'll never make it. They'll always have an environmental fear in them. You'll never get it back. And they go, why? Because the brain and everything is formed and developed. They compare a seven-year-old child to what? A 16-week-old puppy. A seven-year-old child. Now that we've gone through this, I want to back up and explain something to you about altering temperament. When the puppy is born, Till the first day to the <coughs> seventh week of his life, he is formulating a computer in his head. The brain is formed, but there is no chips. We have not programmed him. The chips aren't in place. If during that time I put the wrong chip in that dog's brain, I have, in essence, altered temperament. Why? Because the brain is not formed. A child, seven years, so say a four-year-old child is growing through repetition. If I experience my children to an extreme circumstantial problem, environmental, when they are six months old, they may never recover from it. Why? Because their brain is not completely set. At seven weeks of age, the brain is molded and finished, and all the computer chips are in place, all of them. And if they are all been correctly in place, and are right, then we have a dog with sound temperament. Then everything else from there on becomes character, development of its character to do whatever we desire it to do. That's very important. 
So you can't bring a dog to me at one year old and say, Wayne, I would like a protection dog out of this. Where, where have you had it? And, and out back. How long has it been back here? Until now. This guy never saw people, never saw cars, never saw gunfire. Mr. Lanning had a good point <coughs> earlier when he mentioned the environmental tapes that we've all heard. We use them, only we make them. We don't use them, we don't buy them, we just make them. When the pup's four weeks old, what do we got? Outside the lounge, what's going on? The blank pistol. This is in the lounge. I mean, there's two doors to get in there where the pup's are. And he's with his mother, so he's secure. But his chips aren't right. He's only four weeks old. If I walk in there, and I put that gun down in that blank pistol down in that group of puppies in four weeks and I pull the trigger on it, I ruin them. I altered the little computer chip and said, don't be afraid of guns. I just changed it to it said, be afraid of guns. They scared me when I was young. You'll never get him out of it. When he's five years old, you shoot the gun and he'll just he'll just shut, sit there and quiver and shake. Or he'll escape, or he'll chew, or he'll tear up, or he'll jump, or whatever. He'll never be right. The reason? I altered him before his brain was formulated. Once he is eight weeks old, and I walked in there and I shot my blank, and I went, oh, and he feared me. Then what did he smell? Gunpowder. And he's afraid. So at 12 weeks, I get him out, and I lay the gun down, and the extreme avoidance behavior, the dog, boy, boy, leaves the area. What do I do? I shoot the gun tonight away from him three times I lay it in his box and I put him in a cage. And he sleeps with a gun for a week. And then I get him out again and I play with him and I throw it and try to get him to go bring it to me and let him play with it. And then I shoot her at a distance, way at distance, and I praise him. Somebody's going, good boy, it's okay, good boy. What am I doing? Altering his character, changing him to realize what was bad, but first, is now really not that bad really not that bad. We have a dog at the kennel now that has been hit. Boom, boom. Head stuck. One week with a sack and a whip in my hand and praise. I go lightly over his head and go, ah, that was a rat. That's a good boy. Then I go, ah, and then back and he goes, good boy. And he goes, why do you swing your stick and then tell me I'm good? Why? Well, I'm just showing you. Don't hurt, does it? Then all of a sudden it goes, Ah, break it. And good boy. And then all of a sudden, now then, what the dog, when I did go this way, the first day, laid down, now all he does is go, bats his eyes and backs up a half a step. Character. Why? He is stable here. He's not in sand. But he's environmentally. Dude, get out of the cookies. <laughs> smack, smack, smack. So now my job is a good trainer is to develop, bring this animal back, bring him back to me to where he comes back and says, oh, I'm okay, I'm comfortable, I'm comfortable, I feel good. This stick isn't really going to hurt me. Now, I can see it now, he smacked me, he played, now I even got the dog to where when I play the game I go over and go boom, a little touch on the wrist. And he, oh, good boy, good boy, it's okay. Then this side. And I guarantee you, in 30 more days, when he bites, I can smack him. I can smack him on the back of that stick and you go, ah, that thing doesn't really hurt. It's a little sting, but it don't hurt. Why? I changed the character. You understand? You follow me? I hope you did. I hope I didn't get over your head. Uh, I hope you understand what I'm trying to express. The bottom line is, we breed this. We breed temperament. And then you and I, as breeders, <laughs> must socialize properly and develop character. We must. You cannot, a puppy meal does not. All these dogs have come from these pet centers and all these things have never seen the ground in their life and they come up there and I, there's nothing. They're six months old and I can't do nothing with them. I work so hard with sack and praise and food and reward and gain. Why? He has been environmentally ruined at that age so I can't ever get him back. I can never get him back. Never. It just doesn't work. He won't come back. If I'd have got him at eight, nine weeks, and he had the same problems, he was molding now. He wasn't an adult. He wasn't grown up in, in puberty. He wasn't adult enough, or not adult, but young adult, <coughs> to the point that he understood 
so I can develop him back and get him and make a very viable working animal out of him. Very good dog. We must do these three right here. Breed this, socialize this, and teach character, develop character. Okay, in closing, I'd like to mention one more thing about those of you that are in, involved with puppies. Puppy selection, I'm going to read a little bit from my book. Puppy selection is a very time-consuming affair. If you'll follow the concepts outlined in my lecture, which I'm not going to give you that lecture today, you will have very good success. In protection work, I feel that it's most important to see and evaluate the parents of the puppy. It is more important to see and evaluate the parents of the puppy than if you are just looking for a good companion. Go look at mom and dad and see, is mom and dad's problem character, or is mom and dad's problem temperament? If mom and dad's problem temperament, this puppy has it. If it's character, it doesn't. But it could be, because it could have run to the same people. But if I get it young enough, I can help it. The points I want you to stress. Besides the level-headedness of the temperament, you must look for some extras. The idea of self. Uh, I'm me. I'm a little young puppy. I have self-confidence.
and Dog Week and several other magazines of canines. He is also an international licensed AKC confirmation judge and a SV, Schaeferman Verein, German judge. He has traveled all over the world. His knowledge is irreputable and very, very much a, a part of the system of canine structure and, and orthopedics. He has authored his own book on hip dysplasia, which he will speak tonight on. It brings me great pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Fred Lamb. Thank, thank, thank you very much. I'd like to first say, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Orthopedic disorders are those. Held him. 